So is every successful person just lucky, or is there a reason why they got lucky? Did they make their own luck? I have a whole bunch of lectures, like on negotiation and things like that, that I call my skill series. And these are topics that we don't necessarily have time for in class, but I think it's important that you know. And one thing people don't think about is, how do you make your own luck? And so that's what we're going to talk about here. Steve Wozniak, you know, one of the founders of Apple, gave a talk here in Phoenix. And it was a pretty interesting talk. One thing I learned about the Woz is he's basically a nerd's nerd, that since eight, he was into technology. He loved it. He just eats this stuff up. And the thing he pointed out is he made the entire Apple II, all the hardware, all the software. And for 10 years, that's what brought profit in for Apple. And it was really kind of interesting because he kind of downplayed Steve Jobs' role early on in the company. He said basically he was just a salesman. So I guess you're starting to get into the myth and legend of what really went on. He had some opinions about things like the difficulty with self-driving cars, blockchain, and uh, cryptocurrency is basically a get-rich-quick scheme. Uh, the metaverse is questionable. <laughs> this is a reality you have to deal with. And it was kind of interesting because he's this jovial guy on stage. And then when he was backstage, when we got to talk to him, uh, Professor Chavez and I, he was the one who actually got the tickets. He was actually kind of surly. <laughs> uh, and then it kind of reminded me of me, meaning that inside he's, a not, he's an introvert. When I'm talking to a bunch of group of people, one boss said to me, you can be so engaging and funny and everything, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. You're kind of difficult to talk to. And so I can understand where the Waz was coming from. But the question is, I thought about Waz, and I would say he's definitely smarter than me, but not that much smarter than me. The biggest difference is he loved what he was doing. And to me, eh, technology was just something I did. It wasn't my calling. And so Waz was fortunate that he understood what he wanted to be. And that's why I talk about find your voice. What was the secret of his success? He basically got lucky. If he didn't go into computers, if he just stayed at HP, where he started out working, he would have never become the Waz we know today. And so that one decision, however, you could say he made his own luck through his own talent, that he could do the hardware and the software. Mark Cuban, I actually have a lot of admiration for Mark Cuban because they asked, would you have become a billionaire to, if uh, things had been different? And he said, no, I got lucky. And it's because during the dot-com boom, which produced a lot of billionaires, um, valuations were just irrational. I mean, the company he sold for $4 billion, uh, Broadcast.com, wasn't even turning a profit. However, Cuban did say, though, he would have been a millionaire. And that's because he said he, can, he could sell. He had talent. The thing is, he put himself in a position to take advantage of that talent. Uh, Ren and Page, they're pretty funny. Actually, here you, you got a couple of geeky coders from Stanford, and they had this idea for a search engine. They were actually going to sell it, and they were going to sell it for a million dollars. And what happened is they lowballed them. You know, well, I'll give you a hundred thousand. It's just a search engine. There, there are other ones out there. And then I think they came up to 200,000 and they got so pissed off, they went to their professor and they said, what should we do? Well, this is Stanford, you know, one of the uh, entrepreneurship capitals of uh, universities. And so he said, start your own company. And the thing is, if he had paid them that $1 million, they would have never become the giants of Google. This is Mark Andreessen. Mark Andreessen was a grad student at the University of Illinois. Mark Andreessen would have just gotten a PhD and been a researcher. What happened is Jim Clark saw the potential of the internet. He was looking for a coder to make his 
search engine, which was actually Navig Netscape Navigator. And so he discovered Jim Clark. Clark uh, and Dresa made a boatload. And subsequently, he started a VC firm. And that's where he's working today. And what about Bezos? Well, Bezos was a lawyer. If there had never been a dot-com boom, Bezos would have never started Amazon. But when he saw what it could do and all, the thing I admire about Bezos is he's a very pragmatic man. He knows how to apply what's in front of him. And subsequently, he made Amazon. He was born at the right time for his ideas. My advisor congratulated me after I got my doctorate's degree. And I just said to him, eh, I got lucky. And he said to me, well, you made a lot of your own luck. And that's the thing. How do you put yourself in a position where you can apply your talents to a situation? Circumstances favor certain outcomes. And that's how you make your own luck. To put yourself in a position where your talents can be maximized. How do I do that? These are the things you need to think about. Am I in the right place? For example, if uh, Gates stayed in New Mexico and didn't go to Seattle, maybe Microsoft doesn't make it. Contacts. Who is it that you know? Nobody makes it alone. The thing is, a lot of those guys in the early computer thing were members of the Homebrew Computing Club. And... It's interesting because I talked to some guys who actually were part of that. And they talked about back in those days how none of them had any money and it wasn't about startups. It was all about computing and technology and the joy in that. And so what they would do is they'd order a pizza and then somebody would get out the pizza cutter. And if there were 40 people at the meeting, you know, they just threw in all their change and everything else. And they'd take the pizza cutter and cut it into 40 pieces. That's what they did, but nobody makes it alone. Who is it that you know? Timing. Is the timing right for what you're thinking about? Is it right to go for it? Objective. Are you actually doing this for the right reasons? For example, on American Idol, and I talk, talk about American Idol entrepreneurs. Do American Idol contestants want to be artists? Oh, they want to be famous and they want money. That's what they're motivated by. And that's the wrong thing. It's not the reason to do it. And it's the same thing with entrepreneurs and especially students. A lot of you want fame and fortune. But that's not the reason why you start a company. Are you willing to invest in order to make it successful? And that is, are you willing to exert your will? How much are you willing to put in and sacrifice for it? And subsequently, a lot of people sacrifice marriages, families, things like that. But that's more important to them. I've been offered to interview for three CEO positions. I've turned all three down. And the reason why is because my wife doesn't want to leave Arizona. Uh, before I met my wife, she was a single mother and our daughter is the most important thing in the world to her, more important than me, and that's fine. When we got married, I didn't have to be here, you know, one in everything. <laughs> as long as you're loved, that's the only thing that matters. Uh, but she didn't want to leave her, and she didn't want to leave Arizona, and so I turned them all down because I knew she didn't want to leave, and my family was more important to me. Tactical. Do you make the right moves? Strategy is about the plan, but tactics is how you actually carry it out. And one thing about all these guys is they carried out their plans very, very well. They had the right tactics. And in terms of strategy and coming with a plan to actually do something, to make your own luck, do you actually have one? Here's the thing when I look at some of the things I've worked on. And... What has always been my objective? I want this piece of technology to get out there. I want to get it in people's hands. And so the gyroscope, when we look at this criteria of making your luck, it fulfills all of it. 
who are the right contacts. I didn't know anything about gyroscopes. The best inertial instrument engineers in the world are at Draper Laboratories, and those are the people I met. In terms of strategy, how do I execute this thing? I've always been very good at doing R&D and handling uncertainty. And so there were techniques I knew, which I call the groove, which is an entire other lecture for another time. In terms of my objective, uh, I just didn't go after it from one side, which a lot of people do. I looked at the entire picture and attacked the problem from many different sizes. Was this the right place? Yes, they were hungry for success. They had been successful in seven years working on this technology. Was the timing right? Yeah, there was no competitors. But once we showed the world that a gyroscope was feasible on a micro scale, next thing you know, everybody in this cousin jumps in after you. When they talk about this red ocean, blue ocean, don't believe it. The moment you show <laughs> that you can make money, you've chummed the water and the sharks are after you. In terms of investment, they were hungry and the groove was key. My job at ASU, part of it is I didn't have any contact, but I had excellent references, people who will vouch for me. Again, I had the three primary skills. I wanted a job teaching. I wanted it someplace local. And subsequently, in terms of timing, perfect, because there was a job posting. And my investment was I wanted to teach. I got my doctorate's degree because I thought I'd want to teach someday. Then I kind of found out what professors do, and I don't want to be a teacher anymore. <laughs> um, and then in terms of startups, Here's the thing about the startups I've been part of. No, I am not an extremely wealthy person. I'm comfortable. I'm not worried about where my next paycheck is coming from. However, the thing about me being part of startups is I was always interested in the technology. But in order to have a successful startup, it's more than the product. It's also the marketing, and it's also the executive strategy. And the executive strategy are the CEOs, and they're the ones who make the decisions, because this is a you know, benevolent dictatorship, as Steve Blank used to call it. And so I've been involved in the marketing end and the product end. And subsequently, the things I worked on, they're out there in the market today. They made it. But the thing is, the companies didn't make it. And in that sense, if I wanted to make it as a startup, and I wish I had known this earlier in my life, I needed to get involved in the executive end. And I, that wasn't of interest to me. It was always just about the product. And so I was successful at that. But you win battles and you lose wars. Most people stumble into luck. And here's the thing people don't understand about life. It is not about luck. It is about skill. It's not about success and failure. It's about luck and skill. And what do we mean by about luck and skill? And he talks about how success is a lousy teacher because success makes you think, oh, because I was successful, that means I don't have any faults. And that's not true. You need, when you have an outcome, because there's uncertainty. And anytime you have uncertainty, you have randomness. And that randomness is called luck. You can't account for everything. If you're doing something that is not 100% predictable. And so the question is, is was I good or was I lucky? Did this happen because of my skill or was it just random occurrence? And that's where you can actually fail, but you did all the right things. And so you just got unlucky and just chalk it up to that? Or was it because of skill that you were successful? And that's a good thing. But sometimes you can look into success. And that's where a lot of companies fail because they think their success is because they're so great. And as it turns out, they weren't. This is what you have to you ask yourself. Did I win or lose due to, to skill or due to luck? And here's some example. Motorola used to dominate the entire cell phone industry. They had created the analog phone. 
And they thought the analog phone would last forever. And so they lucked into it. And subsequently, they got killed. Skill is the iPhone. The iPhone was a fast follower, but it was very well conceived. And that's why it dominates the world today. Luck was Theranos, you know, the CEO, Elizabeth Holmes, who's gone to jail. <laughs> but what it comes down to is because she was part of Stanford and everything else, she rose a boatload of money, she got on TV and everything else. And yet it was just lucky that she happened to be in that circumstance. Whereas something like the Freestyle Libre took year, took like a decade to develop. Um, but anyway... It's a successful product now because of skill. Some of you know about the Fire Festival. They were banking on luck to pull that off. And here's the thing, it's like startups. When you say if you say your startup is a one in a million chance, you're not investable. Because think about it. What are the odds of one in a million? I am thinking of a number between one and a million. If you guess the number I'm thinking of, you win. Yes, I was thinking of 786,421. <laughs> oh, you said 22? Too bad, you lose. Um, you compare that to like U2, which was a concert also, but it was very well planned out, very well thought out. That happened due to skill. There are forces you just can't control. Bad luck masks good decisions. Good luck can cloud bad ones. Learn what's right. Judge yourself on things of what you can control. And by doing the right things, you have to believe you improve your chance for good luck. For example, supposing I'm preparing for a race. How do I improve my odds? How do I do the right things? Eat right, exercise. That improves my chances of winning. What if I want to become an expert at something? How do I do that? I study, and that's how I hard work, and I become a master at it. Uh, actually, I'd like to play this video game. <laughs> My wife, uh, who has lupus, and I spend a lot of time with her going to doctor's visits and time in the hospital. And to kill time, uh, especially in this age of COVID, I found a game on my cell phone uh, playing golf. And now it's my kind of like my distraction, but I've actually won a tournament and there were literally about 800 players in this tournament and I finished first. And how did I did that? I did it the way I've always done things to be successful. I studied it. I probed the weaknesses. I tested things. I came up with a strategy and subsequently I won. I understand what it takes to compete. What if I want an A? You also have to give yourself the right perspective. Here's the thing about if you want an A. After an exam, ask yourself, if I had another week to study, could I have done any better? If the answer is yes, then that means I need to work harder. I'm not working well enough. If the answer is no, that it wouldn't make any difference, then you have to accept it. You have limitations. You did the best you could. And so, move on. So why should I focus on what's right? Well, one of the big reasons why you should focus on what's right is that it removes regret. Given the same circumstances, it means that you would do the same thing over again. And regret is one of the biggest things that holds people back. It's one of the three biggest emotion, uh, negative emotions that you can have. Your attitude is and if you can't believe this, then you probably shouldn't go into trying something. But the fundamental belief you have to have is if I do the right things, the right outcome is likely to happen. You can make your own luck. And what it comes down to is anytime you have uncertainty, nobody knows the answer. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And so now we're in the realm of faith. And I lack confidence at times. I don't know if I'm going to be successful. But what you tell yourself is this. I can fight. I have a heart. And if I do the right things, I'm going to get a positive outcome. 
If you can't believe this, then you don't have any business trying. Have faith, because there is no certainty. If you quit too early, you don't get answers. If you're stubborn, you miss it all. Where do, where do I get these answers? How do I decide what to do? Trust that you have inner wisdom, that due to your experience, your intelligence and reason, you can make good judgments. This is, if you watch this special on the fire festival, oh my God, all these people didn't trust themselves and they knew there was something wrong, but they just kept going along with it. Subsequently, everything ended in disaster. This is your inner wisdom. When I was part of my flat panels startup, my department solved the hardest problem in the company. We were forming an alliance with Sony. We were peeking out. I quit. And the reason why I quit is my inner wisdom told me this is a loser. These people don't know how to make a company. They don't know how to make a product. They had just promoted some guy fresh out of grad school who had never made anything in his entire life to lead the technical effort. And I just said, I'm out of here. You guys aren't serious. Uh, they offered me a handsome raise to stay. But then I realized they were just trying to buy me and I can't be bought. I work more, more than just for money. And my inner wisdom was correct. And I'm glad I followed it because I knew they were going to fail and they did fail. I wish they hadn't because I own stock, <laughs> but that's life. Uh, is an innovator. You're going to be challenged to not do it. If your voice speaks, listen to it. And so summing it all up today, we've talked about uncertainty and how we make luck and how it requires faith and how we need to understand that life is about skill and randomness. And subsequently, do things happen because of my skill? Or is it just random things happen and random things do happen. I was in Vegas once and I have a full house with aces up and I knew the guy had hit his full house with Queens and I'm like raising him, raising him, raising him. And on the very last card, he drew the last queen. He started raising me back. I started raising him and then, uh, yeah, I lost a lot of money. But the thing I just thought is, son of a bitch, he hit a 4% draw. <laughs> but the point is, it happens. And so sometimes you get bad luck and sometimes you get good luck. But the point is, put yourself in a position that when the luck, ha when the luck happens, that you can capitalize off of it. And put yourself in a position where a positive outcome, you can affect the probability of things happen will help you.